In the news of lately about Facebook and their uh, privacy uh, concerns here. A lot of people wondering, okay, what's going to happen next with Facebook and how can you really protect yourself? So joining me now is uh, Heather Bakja, a, a partner from uh, Corals and uh, Brady. Thanks so much for coming on. Yeah, absolutely. And this is really all fascinating, fascinating stuff, but also people that are watching, they're like, well, this is scary too. With, with how much information of yours is really yeah. out there. Yeah. and. and there's way more information out there than people would normally normally think about. Um, these kinds of ad networks have been ongoing really for longer than any of us have been aware of. Um, you know, I have a middle school daughter, and now I'm suddenly getting information in my mail, paper mail, for some of the teenage modeling competitions, which I never would have received before. Right, so right. there is information out there that I happen to have a daughter that age in, in that age group. And so the, the things that we're seeing with Facebook are the same types of advertising that we've seen for any number of years. It's just now multiplied on a larger base with all of the technology and, and obviously the scope of something like sure. Facebook. Now, why do you think this is coming out uh, now? Because, I mean, they've been they've been there since 2004. Why right. is it now that we're hearing about all of this? Yeah, so, and, and actually the, the particular facts that have led to this, the news actually broke about this um, back in 2015. Um, it was known at the time that Cambridge Analytica had gotten hold of this data back in 2015. Um, Facebook had made attempts back at the time to get that information deleted. The reason that it is becoming such a large scale issue now is the scale of it was was previously not as well known. Originally back in 2015 they thought it was about 30 million user profiles. Mm -hmm. Now they're saying upwards of 50 million user profiles and it's the use that was being made of it. Um, I think, uh, you know, again, most of us that, that, at least I, that follow these kinds of things right. understand that my information is being marketed to me with the ads and stuff that I see online, but now to turn it for political purposes, um, the background of Cambridge, Cambridge Analytica being a UK firm, which leads into, um, you know, somebody outside the United States working on a US election, mm -hmm. it's just a lot more sensitive than people had realized originally. Oh, oh sure. Now, uh, explain to people, uh, when they put something on Facebook mm -hmm. or they write a post or maybe they share content who get, who is where is this being stored at then where they have this this little trove of uh, information of information about you yeah so um, all in back-end databases um, owned and maintained by, by Facebook um, obviously who has access to that information is typically governed by your privacy settings mm. um, and so you can have a Facebook page that's public and available for anyone to see you can change your privacy settings so that more of that is maintained as private private yeah. um, I use that term loosely um, <laughs> uh, for those that are within your, your group of family and friends that you've connected with on, on Facebook. Um, particularly what happened here was that the, um, the API that was used to develop the particular, um, it was a personality test that had taken place back in 2014. Um, the API allowed people not only to, s to the owner of the app, not only to scrape the data of the users that actually took the personality quiz, but all of their friends oh, um, wow. associated on Facebook as well. That was a loophole that existed in that Facebook API back in 2014, 2015. Facebook has since closed that loophole. Um, and there's also some question about those in the, um, those that took the personality quiz, had they actually changed their privacy settings ahead of time, then they may have been able to close that loophole down to some extent. But wow, they, I mean that's all interesting stuff. And so when when they have your information, it's more mm -hmm. than what you just put put on Facebook, correct? I mean they could look. Can they look in your your phone system as well? Contacts. I depending on depending on how you access Facebook. Mm -hmm. If you're accessing, and this is true of any mobile app, any online service that that you use, um, when you access something on on your computer, on your website, on a website at home, um, then it's possible that they can see sort of other stuff that you may have been doing on that um, on that computer, on your mobile on a mobile app in particular. Again, those privacy settings yeah. can sometimes pull information from your contacts from other information on on your device um, and so one of the main things if nothing else if nothing else comes out of this one of the main things that's going to come out of it is people are going to start paying attention to those little privacy notices that yes. pop up when you start downloading apps because all of that information if they're done correctly should be contained in those disclosures all right and then heather what should people do now to really going forward now mm -hmm. now that they 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 seem to uh, 
uh, curtain pulled back a little right. bit. Uh, what can they do now? So there's a couple things. Um, first, obviously, particularly with respect to Facebook, keep watch your privacy settings. Mm -hmm. um, understand your privacy settings. Um, look at those and, and see what you can do to, to, to get your settings to a point where you're comfortable. Um, the other thing is to read those privacy notices. Um, everything you're looking at online, everything you're downloading should have some sort of privacy policy attached to it that should provide you information of the information that's being collected, who it's being shared with, what it's being used for. Um, and you oftentimes have choices. Um, even within the Facebook settings, you have choices about how your information can be used. Um, when you're on a website and you see a banner ad, you'll see um, typically a little, uh, a little icon in the corner of it um, that provides you information about the online network that is that is targeting that that okay. ad to you, and you can change your cookie settings within your browsers and your devices to to not accept those kinds of things. Sure, and and we and we're being told that maybe later this month that uh, Mark Zuckerberg is going to go in 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 front of uh, Congress. What right. do you uh, what do you think he needs to convey? Uh, to the uh, not not only to the lawmakers but the American people. Yeah, it, it definitely there's a trust factor, particularly with respect to Facebook, that that is that is out there now, yeah. and something that as a company they're going to have to face. And so his anything that he says in front of Congress is going to have to have a dual purpose, not only to um, to ease Congress's concerns, but the millions of Facebook users that are now wondering, you know, what it actually entails to use their 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 services. Sure, and, and what about for other companies as well, like Twitter, I mean, do they do the same sort of? Absolutely, um, and and unfortunately, Facebook is, is the first one that this has come up with, but as going all the way back to when television first launched, and you'll find information out there from historians at the time saying, you're getting this service for free. If you're getting that service for free, then you really are the service, you really are the product. So as you're looking at any of these online services, it, you know, nothing is ever free. Yeah, right. <laughs> um, um, and the question is, how? what is your role in actually providing that service and using that service? And nine times out of 10, it's your data sure. that they want. And, and really, I mean, because they're providing no content, you, everybody is driving Correct. the content by their photos or the videos, and that, Correct. And that is also uh, saying something too. Uh, absolutely, and they're not doing it out of the goodness of their hearts just yeah. because they want us all to be friends online. Yeah. Um, there's, there's absolutely a business purpose there for them to to make money. There we go. All right, uh, Heather Vukta, thank you so much uh, for coming on Absolutely. and really giving us some insights of uh, what exactly is, is going on uh, beyond after you hit that send message, right? That's right. Yeah, all right. Thanks so much. Uh, more news now coming up next, everybody.